When the pandemic shut down life as we knew it in 2020, the online yoga industry took off. The classes ticked many of the boxes people were looking to fill while stuck inside, from offering a way to exercise and de-stress to fostering social connections. There were group Zoom classes or the option to follow your favorite teacher on social media, where you might get to join them in a live stream, learn about what they were cooking to stay healthy, get a discount code for their supplement of choice, and hear their theories about why you should not get the COVID-19 vaccine. And while you might be thinking, wait, that last part sounds like a stretch, that's exactly the sort of content Derek Barris, a yoga teacher himself and the host of the Conspirituality podcast, started noticing on his feed. And this is actually a recurring theme that's been happening in America for at least 200 years. But usually it has an uptick during times of um, great distress like the pandemic. And that's when we started the podcast because we noticed a real uptick in the anti-vaccination rhetoric that was happening as well as a lot of weird merging between the QAnon far-right activism side and then people in the wellness community. It's really driven by the platforms. It's why we say that we think conspirituality in a lot of ways represents the first real online religion that's occurring. And I think there's a real indoctrination process that we're going to have to grapple with moving forward in the years and decades to come. This concept of conspirituality isn't just something that Derek noticed in his community. There are a number of examples that show this bridge between these seemingly unrelated worlds of wellness and conspiracies. Take Gaia, a popular online yoga and wellness platform that partnered with the state of Colorado during the pandemic to give residents free access to its range of fitness and cooking videos. Also in the site's library, videos and articles that explore conspiracy theories about 5G and ones that feature prominent anti-vaccination advocates. On social media, researcher Mark Andre Argentino coined the term pastel QAnon to describe how influencers have leveraged algorithms and feed-friendly aesthetics to court audiences around conspiracies on platforms like Instagram. It's a rabbit hole Derek says can be easy to fall into. Think of someone who maybe suffers from anxiety or depression and maybe you've been put on a pill or a script and it didn't work for you and you didn't have access to a psychiatrist or any real help and then you stumble across a wellness influencer who starts saying things that are influenced by say a course in miracles like the idea that you are your own best doctor that anything that happens to you is up to you and so if you think differently about your mental health, you will then change your mental health, which also tracks very well with the bootstraps mentality, the right-leaning sovereignty. And so you start following this influencer and they're selling a Zoom workshop, they're selling a book, they're selling their supplements that are saying, hey, these can help cure your depression. And so that's how people get indoctrinated into the pipeline. What are the dots that get someone from an idea of anti-vaccine, connect that to, to yoga or from 5G to what we're talking about? From my research, what I feel is that they're connected in this sense of hyper-individualism. So on the right side, you have this idea that the government should have no say at all in your lives, keep them out of our lives. There's this idea of sovereignty that has long been persistent on the right. And then on the left, there, the themes are similar, even if the language is different. So having worked in the yoga space for so long, the idea that you are your own doctor, you know better than anyone else. These are ideas that have been chronic in this industry for decades. But what we're seeing now, specific to vaccines, is that it's gone from don't trust the COVID vaccine to do not trust any vaccines at all, which obviously has detrimental effects on public health in so many different ways. But that distrust has now gone to do not trust any governmental agency, do not trust any media entity that is quote unquote MSM or mainstream media. And so we're in a situation where expertise is no longer championed or even required. Another connection? The desire to make money by offering so-called solutions to the issues these influencers focus on. Which is why you might see a yoga teacher in Los Angeles hawking a similar supplement to, say, Alex Jones, 
who has become rich off of selling unregulated pills and powders, as recently came up when he was on trial for defamation. Supplements is one of the big ones. That's long been a driver of the wellness industry. And if you think about the binaries that they broker in here, well, if the healthcare industry and the pharmaceutical industry, both of which I feel are ripe for criticism, but if you can create a binary where everything that they produce is bad and only the quote unquote natural supplements you sell, which have never been tested clinically, are good, well, then that's one of the main pipelines you have for at least the wellness influencers, but also on the right, Alex Jones made millions of dollars selling supplements. So that there are other right-leaning influencers who have also sold protein powders and survival kits. So this idea of wellness is, has always been spread across uh, all the political leanings. I also saw breath workshops because since COVID is a respiratory disease, some yoga instructors were saying, well, if you're breathing properly, it shouldn't affect you. Um, there's also yoga meditation workshops. Some people were promoting the idea that meditation will help you to overcome the symptoms of COVID, which of course there's no proof for. And then there's books. Uh, so there's been some bestsellers that have sold that are anti-vaccine, but have reached the top of Amazon bestsellers lists. So there, there really is no end to the ways that people have been monetizing this, this fever dream. To keep their followers coming back for more, Derek says you'll often see these influencers peddling heightened conspiracies or societal threats, and then recommending courses, products, or conferences to address this new challenge. It happens often enough that he started to use it as a sort of litmus test to gauge an influencer's credibility. If they're saying a message and then selling something that is in accord with that message, even if it's going against public health, well, they probably have an agenda. So I always say on the podcast, watch what they say and then watch what they sell. And that'll give you a good insight into whether they're being honest with the information or not. What is your advice for someone when they see a piece of misinformation or disinformation like this in their social feed. You're not going to change that random avatar on Twitter that doesn't have a name. You're not gonna change those minds. And if you're getting frustrated or upset or angry by them, it's only gonna affect you negatively and that's not worth it. So the people that you really care about in life, stay in touch with them, do your best to provide good information, do your best not to engage in a ground war. Don't try to make them feel stupid. Don't try to make yourself look smarter than them, but actually engage in a good faith conversation. So there's nothing wrong with taking that online yoga class or downloading a meditation app. Just be sure to apply the same fact-checking standards to claims made in these spaces that you would anywhere else on social media. And if you find yourself served some hashtag wellness content, there's always Derek's test. Watch what they say, then watch what they sell to give you a gut check before buying into anything. Until next time, I'm Hari Srinivasan and this is Take on Fake. Thanks for watching.